Section 5.4 is the definition of logarithms. So a little review, um, finding an inverse, we switch our x's and y's and then solve for y, and what you're left with is the inverse function. So I want you to pause the video, and we've been talking about exponential functions. We have y equals b to the x, and find the inverse of this exponential function. So what will happen is you switch your x and y, and you end up with x is equal to b to the y, and then there's no way to get this y out of the exponent. So that is what a logarithm is. The definition of a logarithm is that it is the inverse of an exponential. So if you have an exponential of this form, b to the y is equal to x, in order to solve for y, we have what's called a logarithm. So this says log base b of x is equal to y. So it's the inverse or solving this exponential equation, where b, our base, is a positive value, and x, what you're plugging into your logarithm, is also a positive value. So if you have your exponential form here, this is your logarithmic form. So when you're switching between forms, you have your log and then your base stays the same. So whatever the base of your exponential is, is the base of your logarithm, which we write as a subscript. And then your input and your output switch. Because remember, for inverses, your domains and ranges switch. So whatever was originally an output or an answer now goes inside the logarithm. Whatever was originally an input or an exponent is now outside the logarithm, or that's what it's equal to, that's your now output. So log base b of x is equal to y if and only if, so it goes both directions, b to the y is equal to x. So here we have two problems in logarithmic form, log base 6 of 36 is equal to 2, and log base 2 of 2 is equal to 1, and go ahead and write those in exponential form, so convert those into exponential form. So when you're switching from logarithmic form to exponential form, your base stays the same, but whatever the base of your logarithm is, is now the base of your expo exponent. And then your input and your output switch. So whatever was an output now becomes your exponent, and whatever was inside the logarithm now becomes your answer. So for the first one, log base 6 of 36 equals 2 is the same thing as 6 squared equals 36. So the answer to a logarithm is the exponent. This question is asking, what do I raise 6 to to get 36, well, I raise it to the second power. Same thing with the second one over here. Base stays the same, so I have log base 2, so the base of my exponent is 2. Input and output switch, so the exponent is 1, and the answer is 2. What do I raise 2 to to get 2? Well, I raise it to the power of 1. So now go ahead and convert the other direction. So given this exponential, 4 cubed equals 64, write that in logarithmic form. So same thing, going the other direction, we have log base, whatever the base of your exponent is, 4, and then input and output switch. So what was originally your output is now the input. What was originally your exponent is now your output. What do I have to raise 4 to to get 64? I have to raise it to the third power. So if you want to evaluate a logarithm by hand, usually the way that I do it is I set it equal to like x or something, and then I switch this into exponential form. So go ahead and pause the video and switch log base 1 half of 8 is equal to x into exponential form. So if I switch this into logarithmic form, I mean exponential form, base stays the same, input and output switch, so I end up with 1 half to the x is equal to 8. So this is a problem like we did in the previous section. Go ahead and pause the video and solve for x. So I made them that both base 2, so 1 half is the same thing as 2 to the negative 1 power, and then to the x, 8 is the same thing as 2 cubed. So we have 2 to the negative x is equal to 2 cubed. Since my bases are the same, we can set the exponents equal to each other. Negative x equals 3, so x equals negative 3. So this question asks, what do I have to raise 1 half to to get 8? Well, I have to raise it to the power of negative 3. This one is the same thing. Whenever you see a logarithm that doesn't have a base written, that is the same thing as base 10. Mathematicians are lazy, and log base 10 is something that comes up a lot. So whenever you see a logarithm that doesn't have a base written, it's the same thing as base 10. So go ahead and pause the video and evaluate log of one, over 100. So log of 1 over 100 is the same thing as log base 10 of 1 over 100, and I set that equal to x, and then I converted this into exponential form. So 10 to the x power is equal to 1 over 100. 1 over 100 is the same thing as 10 to the negative 2, so x is equal to negative 2. So what do I have to raise 10 to to get 1 over 100? I have to raise it to the negative 2 power. So some properties, knowing that these are inverse functions, if you have f of x being b to the x and f inverse of x being log base b to the x, then if I compose f composed with f inverse, that's b to the power of log base b of x. Well, since I know these are inverses, these things have to be equal to x. So that means that the b to the log base b actually cancel each other out, kind of like a square root of x squared. 
Same thing going the other direction. F inverse composed with F of X would mean log base B of B to the X. And again, we know this has to equal X, so that means the log base B and the B cancel. Um, so that's an important property to know. Whenever you have a base and then an exponent with a log with the same base, those cancel and you're left with just whatever's inside the logarithm. Same thing the other way, if you have a log base and then the same thing inside, base raised to a power, whatever your power is, cancel and you're left with just that power. For these next two properties, I want you to evaluate log base B of B and log base B of 1 using what we did on the previous slide to figure out what these two properties are. So if I convert log base B of B into exponential form, you would get B to the unknown X power is equal to B. Well, that would mean that your exponent is equal to 1. So whenever you have log base B of B, that just cancels and you're left with 1 because B to what power is equal to itself? Just the first power. And then log base b of 1, that means b to what power equals 1? Well, anything to the 0 power is 1, so log base anything of 1 is equal to 0. We discussed the natural exponential e in a previous lesson, so now we're talking about, okay, what if that's our base? So if e is the base of our logarithm, log base e, our shorthand for that is the natural log, ln x. So whenever you see ln x, that's the same thing as log base our natural constant e. So you can use logarithms and exponentials to help solve problems that we haven't been able to solve in the past. So in a previous section, if I gave you this, you would want to make both the bases the same. But there's no way I can make 27 be base e. So now instead, we're going to use logarithms to help us solve this. So go ahead and switch this into logarithmic form. So if I switch this into logarithmic form, I'm going to have log base stays the same. So log base e of input and output switch. So log base e of 27 is equal to 3x. But the way that we shorthand log base e is natural log of 27. The natural log of 27 is just a number. So it's irrational, but it's just a number. You can treat it like a number. So go ahead and solve for x. So divide both sides by 3. You end up with x to be the natural log of 27 divided by 3. And so we want to know if that's the same thing as dividing the 27 by 3 and saying this is the same thing as the natural log of 9. So on your scientific or graphing calculators, there is an LN button. There's a log base 10 button and a log base E natural log button. So go ahead and plug in natural log of 27 divided by 3 and the natural log of 9 in your calculator and see if these are the same thing. So if I plug these two things in my calculator, the natural log of 27 divided by 3 is 1.098 and the natural log of 9 is 2.197. So they are not the same thing. So we do not want this one. Order of operations, there's an invisible parentheses around this natural log of 27. That's why they're the not the same thing. So we want this first one here, x is equal to the natural log of 27. We can also solve logarithmic equations now going the other direction. So first off, we have the natural log of x plus, seven, x plus 2 is equal to 4. First thing I want you to do is I want you to switch this into exponential form. So if I switch this into exponential form, nat natural log is the same thing as log base e. So then my base is e. And put and output switch, I end up with e to the fourth is equal to x plus 2. e to the fourth is just a number, so you can treat it like a number. So go ahead and solve for x. So I just subtracted 2 from both sides, and x is equal to e to the fourth minus 2. And that's just your answer in the exact form. So whenever you are trying to solve for something inside of a logarithm, or solve for something inside of an exponent, the only way to undo it is by taking the inverse, which means switching into the other form. So if you're trying to solve for something inside of an exponent, you want to switch into logarithmic form. If you're trying to plug something or solve something inside of a logarithm, you want to switch into exponential form. So in a previous section, we graphed our exponentials, y is equal to b to the x. So our parent function was our horizontal asymptote at y equals 0, 0, 1, and 1, comma, whatever the base was. So now we can graph our logarithms. Knowing that these things are inverse of each other, that means your inputs and your outputs switch. So what was originally your outputs in your exponential now become your inputs. So our x-coordinates are 0, 1, and the base. And what was originally your inputs are now your outputs. Your horizontal asymptote, if I reflect it, now becomes a vertical asymptote, and then 0, 1. So this is what a logarithmic graph looks like. You have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0, you have the point 1, 0, and you have the point, point base comma 1. So using that, we want to graph the function f of x equals log of x plus 1. Remember, whenever we don't write a base, that means our base is 10. So go ahead and pause the video and graph this using transformations. 
So in gray, I have the parent function. And remember, when we don't have a base written, that means it's base 10. So the parent function is log y equals log base 10 of x. So my x-coordinates are 0, 1, the base, which is 10, and our vertical asymptote, 0, 1. And this thing has been shifted left 1. So I just subtracted 1 from all my x-coordinates. So our vertical asymptote is now at x equals negative 1. The point that was originally at 1, 0 is now at 0, 0. And the point that was originally at 10, 1 is now at 9, 1. So here we have f of x is equal to negative natural log of x. Go ahead and pause the video and graph this using transformations. So our parent function is y equals natural log of x, which is the same thing as log base e of x. So my x coordinates are 0, 1, the base, which is e. And then my y coordinates are my vertical asymptote 0 and 1. And then this thing has been reflected across the x-axis. So if you reflect a vertical asymptote across the x-axis, it's not going to go anywhere. Still x equals 0. If you reflect something that's sitting on the x-axis across the x-axis, not going to go anywhere. Still going to be at 1, 0. And then this point e1, if I reflect it across the x-axis, is now e negative 1. So E is about 2.7. So I have my vertical asymptote. I have the point 0, 1, 0, and I have the point E, negative 1. One thing to notice is that because of this vertical asymptote, it's going to get infinitely close to it, but it's never going to cross. So notice there's no negative x's here. So this was mentioned on a previous slide, but the domain of a logarithmic function, or this specific logarithmic function, is that x is greater than 0. So whatever's inside your logarithm must be strictly greater than 0. So this is a new domain issue for us to know. Whatever's inside your logarithm must be strictly greater than 0. So here we have a last one, y equals log base 4 of x minus 2 plus 3. We want to graph this thing using transformations and also find the domain of this function. So go ahead and pause the video and try this. So this is log base 4 of x is our parent function, and it's been shifted to the right 2 and up 3. So I started with my x's 0, 1, and the base, which was 4, and then my y's vertical asymptote 0 and 1. I shifted all my x's to the right 2, so I added 2, and I shifted all my y's up 3, so I added 3. So the vertical asymptote is now at x equals 2. My point that was originally at 1, 0 is now at 3, 3. And the point that was originally at 4, 1 is now at 6, 4. For the domain, whatever's inside your logarithm must be strictly greater than 0. So the domain is x is greater than 2. And I didn't mention this before, but the range for all logarithms is all real numbers. So this has been an introduction to logarithms and graphing logarithms as inverses of exponentials.